Hello, today I will be giving an academic speech on OCD. It's a condition that significantly impacts my life and the lives of so many others. I'm speaking on this topic to shine a light on the condition, to raise awareness, and to decrease stigma. It is estimated that approximately 2.3% of the U.S. population has OCD. For being so prevalent, OCD and mental health in general is not discussed nearly enough. So what is OCD? OCD is an anxiety disorder characterized by obsessions and compulsions. According to the International OCD Foundation, obsessions are thoughts, images, or impulses that occur over and over and over again and feel outside of the person's control. This is a general and broad definition, as obsessions vary based on the type of OCD one has. One thing that is important to remember and that remains constant across the board of OCD is that obsessions are only thoughts. Obsessions are intrusive thoughts, meaning they are unwanted by the sufferer. Obses obsessions can become very dark, disturbing, unsettling, depending on the type of OCD. The individual with OCD knows these th thoughts, these obsessions are illogical um, and only a part of the disease, but they can cause a great deal of emotional distress regardless. Obsessions are only thoughts and in no way reflect on the morals, personality, or values of the sufferer. Compulsions constitute the second part of OCD and are defined by the International OCD Foundation as repetitive behaviors or thoughts that a person uses to neutralize, counteract, or make their obsessions go away. Distressing thoughts or obsessions become so present in the mind of one suffering from OCD that they are willing to go to great lengths to get rid of them. By performing different compulsions, which can take up incredible amounts of time and interfere with work, school, and life, the sufferer receives temporary relief from their obsessions. Like obsessions, compulsions vary too, depending upon the type of OCD one has. To better understand obsessions and compulsions, we must first understand the different ways in which OCD can present. There are many forms of OCD, including contamination OCD, just right OCD, religious OCD, sometimes called scrupulosity, relationship OCD, pedophilia OCD, and harm OCD. When one thinks of OCD, a fear of germs may come to mind. While this is an aspect of contamination OCD, contamination OCD is so much more than being a germaphobe. Those with this type of OCD obsess over getting sick and possibly making others sick as well. This leads to compulsions, such as excessive hand washing, scrubbing, and cleaning that may take up hours of time. Contamination OCD may surround any contaminant, not just germs. Common phobias or contaminants may include bodily fluids, st sticky st substances, environmental contaminants, animals, and even other people. Contamination OCD makes it incredibly difficult to function in society. One may be unable to use public restrooms, visit friends who have animals, or eat out at restaurants in fear of uh, getting food poisoning. Just right OCD is another common form of OCD. With this type of OCD, one obsesses over order and checking. Just right OCD is about more than just lining books up on a shelf or liking things situated a certain way. Just right OCD can interfere greatly with many aspects of everyday life. Someone suffering from just right OCD may spend hours locked in repetitive patterns of seemingly senseless behavior. With just right OCD, one may develop difficulty in reading and writing, stuck rereading and rereading certain lines to ensure full understanding or comprehension, and rewriting papers over and over and over until the ritual breaks and they feel just right about it. Just right OCD causes people to lose their jobs, drop out of school, and give up the joys in life such as reading, writing, and having conversation. Religious OCD is a more specific form of OCD. This type of OCD is also known as scrupulosity. In this form of OCD, obsessions are of a religious or spiritual nature. For example, one with religious OCD may fear accidentally sinning or doing something that goes against their morals and beliefs. Those with religious OCD may believe that if they don't recite a spe specific prayer a specific number of times, then they or those that they care about will burn in hell. Religious OCD can cause one to feel like a terrible person worthy of ill fortune. OCD can damage relationships as seen in relationship OCD. With this type of OCD, the sufferer may seek reassurance from their partner, constantly questioning the status of their relationship. 
One with this type of OCD may fear accidentally committing infidelity or worry that they no longer have feelings for their partner because they so much as glance at somebody else the wrong way or question if they glanced at somebody else the wrong way. One with a relationship OCD may question the fidelity of their partner when there is no reason to do so. Relationship OCD is not the same as being clingy. Pedophilia OCD is a rarer and more taboo form of OCD. In this type of OCD, one obsesses over assaulting children. This type of OCD can ruin careers and separate families. Remember, in OCD, obsessions are only thoughts and they are unwanted. They cause as much, if not more, distress to the sufferer as they would to someone without the disease. People with OCD are less likely to con commit indecent acts because they do everything in their power to prevent them from occurring. People with OCD and mental illness in general are no more likely to be perpetrators of violence than those without, but instead are more likely to be victims due to stigma. While the exact cause of OCD is unknown, there are likely many factors involved. Biochemical factors, such as imbalances of certain neurotransmitters like serotonin and glutamate, are believed to contribute significantly. People with OCD have higher levels of glutamate in their cerebral spinal fluid that surrounds their, their brain than those without the condition. OCD may involve stru structural and functional factors. Um, it's been shown that individuals with OCD have less gray matter in the part of the brain that's important for suppressing responses and habits. Scientists have discovered four brain genes linked to OCD. A brain imaging study recently demonstrated the brain inflammation is 32% higher. There's 32% higher brain inflammation on average in patients with OCD than in people without. So how is it treated? Currently, OCD can be managed, uh, can be treated and managed with only a few medications and forms of therapy. However, before we discuss this, we must discuss the barriers. There are many barriers that stand in the way of access to OCD treatment. General knowledge of OCD is so poor that those suffering from the condition may not know they have it. Those suffering may be too afraid or embarrassed by their obsessions or compulsions to seek help. OCD is an incredibly isolating disease. Finding doctors that understand and know how to treat the condition can be extremely difficult. OCD is expensive. The cost of routine visits to therapists, psychiatrists, and pharmacists add up quickly. So with treatment. Today, the first line pharmacological treatment for obsessive compulsive disorder is very high dose selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs, a type of antidepressant. Scientists and researchers are unsure of why such high doses are needed, but they are, and they help a lot of people with OCD. Other drugs, including other antidepressants, anxiolytics, which are anti-anxiety medications, and low-dose atypical antipsychotic medications are sometimes prescribed. Research is ongoing for newer drugs to treat the condition, such as glutamate modulators, drugs already used to treat dementia, and transdermal nicotine. In PANDAS, pediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal bacteria, OCD may onset extremely quickly in childhood following a strep infection. If this is the case, the use of antibiotics and steroids appears to be effective in treating the condition, perhaps by reducing brain inflammation caused by antibodies produced from the strep infection. In addition to medications, different therapy forms such as cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and exposure response prevention, ERP therapy can help. CBT therapy focuses on confronting and changing behaviors by changing one's thought process and, and, and teaching, one, teaching one healthy coping mechanisms. Um, it, it helps people to become more aware of their thoughts for what they are, thoughts, and, be, and, and learn how to work with them. ERP therapy focuses on, on what the name implies, exposure response prevention. And it's, it's a type of therapy that works to, um, it, it presents uh, something, a stimuli that gives somebody with OCD a lot of distress um, at, at, different, at different amounts. So um, for example, in contamination OCD, a therapist trained in ERP may have their patients slowly face their fears 
by having them touch a perceived contaminated surface and resist the desire to engage in hand washing, which would be the compulsion for a set, set amount of time. Um, over time, one sees that they are not harmed and their brain comes to learn that the stimuli that once caused them so much distress uh, is not in fact dangerous and the, and the patient is uh, able to function better. OCD continues to be misunderstood and mis, um, people are misinformed uh, and it's, it's a stigmatized disease and it's important that we talk about it and, and know that it's a real thing and know that there is no such thing as having a little OCD. You can't have a little diabetes or a little cancer or a little Alzheimer's. OCD is something you have. You either have it or you don't. You can have varying degrees of severity of OCD or mild OCD to severe OCD, but it's a diagnosable condition and it is a real and serious condition that can be treated. And left untreated, it can greatly impact and devastate people's lives. Thank you.